Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sandra. I'm Andreas and we are two sweets and we love design. Mm -hmm. And today we will show you some of the very best Finnish design classics which amazingly are still in production. Uh, Finland is, as you may or may not know, not a part of Scandinavia, mm -mm. Uh, but it is a part of the Nordic countries. And now, with that said, we can move on. <laughs> and we will be telling you the background about these iconic pieces and their designers. And of course, we will also uh, go into the prices, both new and secondhand. Of course. Let's start off with one of the absolute best Finnish designers ever. <laughs> one of the great innovators of modern furniture design, Eero Arnio. Mm. Amazingly, he is still practicing today at 90 years old. Mm. Arnio was born in 1932. Then he... He should be 91 this year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Helsinki, the Finnish capital. He studied interior design between 1954 and 57. Soon after graduating, he began working for designer Ilmari Tapiovara, mm. who at the time was collaborating with manufacturer Asku. We will be talking more about him later, actually. Yeah. In 1962, Arnio opened his own design studio and developed an ongoing relationship with Asku himself. It's now that he starts to experiment with plastics, the material he became most famous for. Now to his most famous piece, the ball chair. Yeah. It was born in 1963 after experimentation with fiberglass reinforced plastics. In 1966, it was exhibited at the Colony Furniture Fair and was highly appreciated. After this success, Asko recognized the potential of the pop aesthetic, so they wanted Arnu to create more plastic furniture. Yeah. And he did not disappoint. He created many pieces in the years to come and in 1971 the tomato chair, a personal <laughs> favorite, was born. Arnio's furniture expanded the international view of Scandinavian design beyond natural materials and minimalist mm -hmm. shapes. And now to the prices. Oh. The ball chair costs uh, 7301 dollars uh, new and the tomato chair uh, 3305 oh. on first dibs i found one first edition ball chair for 24300 <laughs> yeah that's expensive so that's yeah. expensive but it usually costs around uh, 5800 to 6800 yeah. so um some somewhat less than yeah. a new one the tomato is most often around four thousand dollars, so that's a bit more. Yeah, perhaps than a new one. Yeah, hope they are old ones at least. Then. Really hope or so. not uh, like really quite new so. ones. <laughs> no. On Swedish mm -hmm. auction sites, on the other hand, the ball chair can sometimes be yours for as little as two thousand four hundred. Yeah, that's cheap. Mm -hmm. And the tomato just around thousand dollars. So lucky us. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is uh, the designer and architect Alvar Alto and his epic tank chair. Alto was born in 1898 and in 1916 he became, uh, began studying to become an architect. And this was interrupted by the Finnish civil war, uh, but he was able to get a degree in 1921. And already in 1923 he opened his own architectural studio. And the following year, uh, he married a uh, fellow architect, Aino, and they came to work closely together. Uh, I mean, almost all furniture attributed to Alvar is, al is also made by Aino. Yeah, it's yeah. a collaboration. Mm. Yeah. And one of Alto's most important projects is the Paimio Sanatorium. And it was his first total design uh, where he designed everything from the building itself to all the furnishings and the details. Mm. Alto was a modernist and humanist who focused his work around organic forms and natural materials. Mm. Uh, his first choice of material was wood, and he used uh, and his use of uh, plywood uh, inspired many other modernists after him, like for example Charles Henry Eames and also Arne Jacobsen. 
1935, he met uh, factory owners Marie and Harry Gullichsen, and together they started the company Artec to manufacture and sell Altos design both in Finland and abroad. And now to the tank chair, or armchair 400 as it was originally called. It was designed in 1936 for the Milan Triennale, where it got lots and lots of attention, of course. It's spectacular. <laughs> um, it was Alto's first piece of furniture not designed for one of its architectural projects. And it really resembles a tank uh, with the wide armrests as tank tracks on each side of the seat. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a sturdy yet comfortable cantilever chair. And what does this massive share cost? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the answer is between 5,780 to 6,700 dollars, depending mm. on the upholstery. It's often seen in this zebra. Yeah, I don't really like that. Nah, it's, well, it's, you do. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. <laughs> actually. Ah. Yeah. Um, uh, and old shares seems to be about seven to. Ten thousand dollars somewhere there Mm -hmm. when sold at first dibs, Mm. but on Swedish auctions you can buy one for as little as uh, three thousand. Lucky us again. Yeah, lucky us again. But obviously it depends on how old it is. Really, early shares are hard to find. Of course. But we must mention that uh, a lot of um, Artec furniture were produced in Sweden Mm. uh, actually up in uh, in, uh, Dalarna. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, there there are quite a few uh, mm-hmm. old uh, alto pieces in yeah. Sweden. As you may or may not know by now, we love chairs. Yeah. We but do. I really <laughs> wanted to include something other than chairs, yeah. so I chose Pavo Tinel and his lamps. Yeah. And in particular, the fifty three twenty one table lamp. Oh yeah. Uh, Pavo Tonell was born in 1890. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> and he was an industrial designer. He is known as a great pioneer mm. of Finnish lighting design and is said to be the man who eliminated Finland. That's something. Yeah. He was one of the founders of Taito Oi, uh, Finland's first industrial producer of light fixtures, just after the innovation of electrical lights yeah, in the yeah. beginning of the 20th century. Yeah, they were, it's hard to believe that it there is. were no electric it lights no, before no, this. No, no, no. <laughs> it's crazy. Tinel and Taito Oi explored the manufacturing of modern lighting solutions with some amazing results. He is known for elegant brass mm-hmm. designs, uh, most often inspired by nature. He got much recognition in the 30s and 40s. This is also when he collaborated with Alvar Aalto, oh, actually, oh. and created lighting for all of his major projects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of his most amazing pieces are sadly not produced today. I don't know why. No, that's a shame. But the 5321 lamp is, and this lamp is also known as the shell lamp due to its brass shade resembling a seashell. Mm-hmm. And right under the shell-shaped shade, the light bulb sits like a glowing pearl. <laughs> yeah. It is really pretty, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, so now let's talk prices. Mm-hmm. New, this lamp is $999. Yeah. Tinel's lamps uh, are highly sought after by collectors, and that reflects in the price of older lamps. Yeah. I found one from the 40s that could be yours for $18,000. Mm-hmm. That's 18 times more than a new one. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and another one was uh, sold for 21666 Yeah, a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But they are very old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This model is not nearly the most expensive one on first dibs. No. But it's the only one I found. Yeah. New produced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On Swedish uh, sites, uh, you can get it for around 350 to $400. Not so old one. No, uh, uh, a bit yeah. newer ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and the next one is also a favorite. 
the Mademoiselle Cher by Ilmari Tapiovara. He was born in 1914 and studied interior and industrial design. And while he was a student, he worked for Alvar Aalto, no surprise, <laughs> in his London studio in 1935-36. Hmm. And he graduated in 1937 and soon visited the Paris World's Fair. And during this visit, he was able to get an assistant job at the Le Corbusier studio for six months. Mm. Yeah, really cool. That is cool. <laughs> um, soon after this, uh, he was hired as an artistic director at the largest furniture manufacturer in Finland at the time, Asko. Yeah, oi, oi. <laughs> Incorporated. Yeah. 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 And he remained there for only three years. Tapiovara and his wife Aniki uh, took uh, on interior design projects together and around 1950 they opened a studio in Helsinki. Tapiovara is best known for furniture and interiors, but he also designed lighting, glass, textiles, uh, yeah, often in collaboration with his wife, mm -hmm. and cutlery and also radio and stereo uh, components uh, through the mid-70s. Tapiovara took a democratic approach to design, uh, believing everyone should have access to affordable, good design. And he was highly influenced by Alvar Aalto and wanted to carry out his ideas in his own work. Uh, the Mademoiselle chair was designed in 1956. Um, Tapiovara preferred to work with wood and took inspiration from traditional Finnish uh, spokeback chairs. Uh, the high backrest, low seat, and angled legs combines into a comfortable lounge chair. Yeah. Uh, Mademoiselle was originally designed for the Swedish company Edsbyverken with a molded plywood seat resting on a frame made from shipboard. Uh, a version with a solid seat was produced in Finland by Asko. Mm. And we have one uh, of these Swedish uh, versions. Oh, yeah. Do. yeah. And now to the price. The share cost $1,507 new, and on first dibs you can get two early shares for around $3,000. Uh, so, so that's the same price. Yeah, the same but price. Older ones. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, on Swedish auctions, on the other hand, it only costs around $200, so it's a good thing to buy them in Sweden, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It always is. Yeah. Last and definitely not least for today no. is Irje Kukapuro's Caruselli lounge chair. Yeah. Do you think it's funny with Kukapuro? Uh, in, in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kukapuro <laughs> was born in 1933 and he studied to become an interior designer and graduated from the Institute of Industrial Arts in Helsinki in 1958. The year after he started his own design office called Studio Kukapuro. Yeah. That's a surprise. <laughs> During this time, he was involved with extensive experimentations with fiberglass and er ergonomic shapes. He spent four years sculpting the shell for his most famous piece of furniture to create optimal dimensions and comfort. That's a long time. That's a long time. <laughs> the result was the Caruselli lounge chair, mm. finished and produced in 1964. It was a revolutionary chair which combined ultimate comfort through a union of function, ergonomics and organic form with new materials and production mm, yes. The chair was first shown to the public at the Colony Furniture Fair the year after and was an international immediate success. Yeah. It was named the most comfortable chair in the world <laughs> by the New York Times in 1974. How cool is yeah, that? It is extremely comfortable. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. Most comfortable in the world. Yeah. And now to the price. Yeah. And this one is quite pricey, I must tell you. <laughs> it will cost you $9,566 new. Yeah, that's a lot of money for a chair. Ooh, it is. <laughs> the price on the second-hand market varies quite a bit. Mm -hmm. The cheapest I found was 6,444, mm. and the most expensive one I found was 15,028. Okay, that's... Uh, and I couldn't really find much difference. No, these kind of furniture doesn't really matter if they're mm. old or oh. a bit newer. Nah. Super... Uh, Strange. Uh, I don't know why. Nah. On the Swedish auction sites, it seems to be much cheaper, surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I found several examples sold for around uh, 3,600 to 3,900, oh, yeah. actually. So we're in luck once again. Once again. <laughs> we must buy all of them. We must buy, and it's a good idea. And sell them in other countries. And sell them in other countries, <laughs> yeah, to make a lot of money. <laughs> yes. 
that's all for today and hope you enjoyed <laughs> and please tell us in the comments which one is your favorite mm -hmm. and uh, which one you would buy yeah yeah thank you so much uh, for watching thank you Thank you.